Yo, what's so, up? How are you? I'm doing good, man. So great to see you. How's uh, how's your day been? Pretty good, man. Just you know, doing dad stuff. <laughs> you're in that you're in that dad mode. Uh, you, you had mentioned uh, to us earlier when we were setting this up. Uh, yeah, so. always, always, man. Dad mode. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that's what's up. How has parenting and uh, and being in dad mode been in what are uh, unquestionably sort of the craziest set of circumstances we've we've lived in? Uh. Earlier on, when it first started, it was really like kind of, man, it was crazy. You know, you didn't, you didn't know where things were going. You didn't know where to go, what to do. You know, you're trying to protect your kids, and also you're in a in a headspace of, you still have to keep your kids like kind of in a happy mind frame about life itself. You know what I mean? So, right. as you like pretend like shit's all good, <laughs> you like you know hide under your covers with the blankets you know what i'm saying <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah yeah it was just, it was just like super crazy but um you know we we got good neighbors and stuff like that so we kind of work everything out that's great that's really good to hear we've you know we've been doing this version of the show online since the pandemic started so it's been interesting. We're all sort of in this social experiment together where like, yeah. you know, it, it, when, whenever we get out of this, we'll be able to look back at all of these episodes and everybody who we talk to in different parts of the country and just sort of see like the, the evolution and growth. And hopefully it's, it's a happy ending when, when we're, we're, we're all we'll be able to look back and laugh. But man, yeah, if we're, yeah, if we're, I not, agree. If we're not going through it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, man. Uh, Again, really grateful and happy to have you here. You're an absolute legend. You know, so many fans of uh, of, of all of the, the music that you've done throughout, you know, your decades in, in, in the game, which is crazy. Like, do you, you ever stop and think that you are like, you're kind of an OG at this point? That, like, you have been in this game for, for 30 years? Over 30 years. It's crazy, man. Um, <clears throat> I don't really think about it. Yeah, because and I think my crew probably thinks the same way is because we're so busy trying to make timeless music that we don't want to get into the headspace of all the the you know it, it's trippy because people can lose their head about what it is to be in the business and yeah. just become some other some other shit you know what I mean and um, that's not something we ever wanted to become because it kind of gets in the way of the music you know what I mean so uh, music first. You know, make a show, make sure we got a tight show first. You know, we treat every every show like it's our first and our last one we'll ever do. And just keeping things high. And I, I think that's how we think about it. I, I, I respect what we've been blessed with more than kind of like wiping my ass with everything. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, yeah, I'm this, I'm that. You know, like, right. I, L less I don't about, care about that. Less about you know? the ego and more about the experience and less about, like, you doing it, but the fact that it's been, like, it's almost like a gift that's been given to you and that you're able to give back to, sort of. Right. So, you know, like, there was a time where in, in hip-hop and in music in general, you wouldn't, there's no part of you that knew that you would ever make it as a hip hop or, or as a singer or any of those things, because the bar was like super high, you know what I mean? So, <clears throat> you know, I look at cats like De La Soul and stuff like that, you know, they, they've been like, um, they've been like a high bar, Tribe Called Quest high bar, yeah. you know, and I, you know, the list goes on, <clears throat> LO Cool J, all, all these folks, man. And um, I'm, when we got into it ourselves, it, it's just, we want to keep it. It's like you want to keep your room clean. You don't want to step into the. You want to step in a, a white carpeted house with with clean shoes. Like take your kicks off at the door. Don't come in with mud and you know mud slinging and stuff like that. You know because we're honoring music. All of us. All the people that I just mentioned. You know. Absolutely. We think of it the same way. Absolutely. Well. Again, we're thrilled to have you. So, you know, this is a this is a game show. So what but, but what we're really here to do is just geek out and, and talk about the music. Let's that we go. Love, talk about your yeah. career. You know, and, and I will say this. A lot of people, uh, you know, there we've had guests on the show before. This is episode number 72. So we've had guests okay. on the show before who, if they don't know the answer, they will look to the chat that's at the bottom. And then we have <laughs> other guests who swear okay. off of it. So I'm just letting you know that you have the option. You know what I mean? Like, it, okay. it could be a lifeline. But I I, you know what? It, trivia. I'm really not good at it at all, and I might know the answer, but 
We'll let's see. Go ahead. Let's go I, ahead. I'm not, I'm not asking you to even make a decision now. You, you, <laughs> it's just, you can have it in your pocket. So we're going to okay. move into our first round. And the first round of the night is called The Choice is Yours. This is general multiple choice. So we're okay. going to get right into it. Slim Kid Trey, Trey Hardison. Here we go. Radio personality Big Boy got his start on Power 106 after getting discovered or put on by these DJs. Was it the Beat Junkies, Stretch and Bobbito, the Baker Boys, or Almighty Roughnecks? I'm going to go with the Baker Boys. He's going with the Baker Boys. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen? First question out the gate. He is correct. The Baker Ooh. Boys put him on. <laughs> You know, I bring this up because uh, you guys have an interesting uh, history with uh, with Big Boy before he was in the world of radio. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, <laughs> he was um, he was a bodyguard for the yeah far Big side, Boy. Right? Uh, Big Boy was one of our bodyguards. There's Big Boy and there's Big Seal Love too. So. so I mean, like, was that a crazy transition for you to see? Like, obviously, I know he, he probably didn't hop right from being a bodyguard into becoming big boy. But like seeing that, like, like he, he's made a whole career. It's kind of cool to see people like do a flip and like, you know, see yeah. guard to like, I assume a pretty, you know, like, w you know, achieving, you know, successful radio personality is incredible. Yeah, he's super incredible. He's always been, man, he's always been the, the, the kindest guy. I've ever I've ever known I, 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 man I love big boy so much man he's like a, he's like a big brother but he's been in the he's been in the mix for quite some time you know right and, and people don't know but Mick, big boy can he can actually DJ you know what I'm saying? <laughs> he uh he he hung out hung, hung out with uh Mark Love and stuff like that back in the day our first DJ and um uh, man I you know and he's been in the mix with a lot of people with Paul Stewart uh DJP um all these folks is like a, uh, it's like a, a way, a road for Big Boy to go and do what he what he already knows. And he's super funny. Like I didn't know he was that funny. He's funny. <laughs> he's real funny. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's got okay. Comedy on him, man. But I think that I think that comes from being in, in the circle of of being around us as well. Like Big Boy is funny, but amongst us too, oh man, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. I feel like for the far side at their at their height, like it would have almost been a requirement for bodyguards. Like you have to be big, but you have to also be very funny if you, if you want to roll with the crew. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if you're gonna be a part of the fam, you know, it's got it's got to be like family. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's got to be Absolutely. like family. Well, that's what's up. Okay, we're gonna move on to our second one. All right, good so go. far, right? All right, here we go. In 2007, Talib Kweli released a free album called Liberation with this producer. Was it? High tech, oh no, J Swift or Mad Lib? Can I go with high tech? <laughs> uh, well, I mean, you can, but you don't sound very confident about it here. So I mean, like, let's go with high tech. Say, I like, I like the okay. combination of him and high tech. You know? Uh, okay, he's going high tech. Let's see what the answer is. The answer was actually Mad Lib. Mad Lib, I album. knew it. <laughs> uh, you know, sometimes you got you got to go with your gut. But it's yo, I knew it was Mad Lib. Oh, I knew it was Mad Lib. Hey, no, it's fine. It's already in the past. It's far in the past. But, you know, uh, he put out an album called Liberation. You also put out an album called Liberation. Uh, that I was, did. you know, one of your early solo works. And I wanted to yeah. know, you know, you've done a lot of things. Like, obviously, The Far Side is what a lot of people recognize you for. But you've, you've yeah. been, you know, very, very fruitful uh, since then as well. And uh, do you ever miss, like, what is it like working on your solo music versus the group? And are there things that, now that you've done both, like, sort of what side do you prefer when it comes to creating um so what so i look at well i envision or how i look at things i really love the far side man i really love making music yeah. you know with the with this with the group you know and um but doing my solo project was like there's certain here's 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 in a nutshell there's certain things that maybe I believe in or I do. I was going through a lot of uh, of my Phoenix stage, my Legend of Phoenix stage, you know, and things that I topics that I was talking on or things that I was talking about, you know, maybe they, you know, didn't relate to it or or you know like weren't in support of it or whatever, you know, like they they were definitely in support of what I I was just going through a lot of different spiritual transitions and stuff and mm. and to make that record. I had to make that record, you know. Um, they could have definitely been on that record. They they could have definitely um, 
produced some beats on that record. I, you know, it wasn't a closed door, sure. but it was just, uh, you know, it was it was just a record that I needed to kind of do. With I, I was I was orchestrating. I had a live band and the whole deal. It wasn't me leaving the group at all. It was just doing a record. It's like, it's kind of like NWA, and then you got. Uh, then you had, um, oh my God, Easy E. You know what right. I mean? Or better than that, better, better, better um, example than that is you got Wu Tang and you got Meth, you got you know ODB, you got Everybody. all these sub records, but you still had a Wu, and that's yeah. how it should have definitely been. Um, Imani uh, even just put out a, a record now um, that that's, that's really cool. You know what I'm saying? Like there's stuff on there, and it's him expressing. There, it's like. You go through these, it's like kind of Alice in Wonderland. And you go through these different chambers and doors, you know, like I couldn't under, I, I can't understand what's in Imani's mind. Right. Until he shows it to me in his record. And you know, like, dang, right. that's pretty dope. Or that's what he needed to express or explore, you know what I mean? So that's how things uh, were in a nutshell for liberation. And liberation was something, man, I had to dig in my soul about stuff. You know, and one thing I, I remember Imani t telling me years ago, he's like, yo, everybody doesn't want to be preached to. And after making that record, I understood what he was talking about for sure. You know, I mean, I'm, I get that. And then my sister said, you know, sometimes you have to, you know, dish out the uh, the medicine with a little sugar. Right. And once I got that, I, you know, went from liberation and I started trying to incorporate all of what I know now and not being preachy because yo yeah people don't really be preached to but you know i just found a different way like you know maybe there can be a couple songs that are not even preachy but you know yeah you a, a balance mixing it a up. balance yeah yeah because yeah, i you know just a little bit more of balance would have been you know perfect but i had some good times making liberation man like working with saul williams working with you know, fat jack uh, working with mc Light working with yeah. you know um, Prince Board uh, who produced you know Black IP stuff you know family it was, it was great stuff man you know yeah that's incredible yeah definitely don't sleep on the Liberation album if you guys have yes, heard that please yeah. don't sleep on the Liberation album I, I have to actually um, re-release it it's not on streaming yeah I saw this yeah it's, it's not right. but I know it, I, yeah I gotta go get the masters them shits is in my garage <laughs> in Los Angeles <laughs> here I am in Portland. But no, I gotta, I gotta like get that and and you know make some uh, vinyl and just really get that. Uh, Keaton Simons and uh, and Fish from Fishbone on uh, Just Can't Hold, also with yeah. uh, Tim Hill from uh, the original Black Eyed Peas. You know what I'm saying? So, oh uh, right, it's, that's right. It's some treats on there, man. And it's like, man, I was really going through some times in my life, liberating. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> uh, all right we're gonna move on we got trey hartson from the far side from for many other things uh we are uh moving on to our third question rap battle television show drop the mic starring method man who we spoke about earlier featured yep. this hip-hop dj is the program's house dj was it dj scratch a track z trip or newmark i'm gonna say newmark He's saying Newmark, he gave it a thought. And guess what, folks? He is absolutely right. It is DJ Newmark, another guy who you uh, you put in some work with. You've, uh, that, you've worked with Newmark true. on numerous projects. So, oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. Th that, that was like the second coming of a group, sort of. You know, like you, you did the solo yeah. thing after the far side, and then it's like, all right, let's, let's uh, you know, Newmark's a great guy. He's a friend of the show. Uh, what, what was that experience like working with him on those projects? Oh man, Newmark is is really dope. He's super particular, you know, man. He uh, sent me a batch of beats for the first record for the Slim Kid Trey and DJ Newmark album, and you know, I, I listened to everything and I and I and I worked through it all and stuff. Like, oh man, I recorded stuff over here by myself, and I sent it to him. He's like, you know, T, I think I'm gonna have to have you come down to Los Angeles and work, you know, at the house. We're going to just revamp all of this stuff because, you know, because sometimes, you know, I get into my, like, 2D mode. You know, like, going to the top, you know what I mean? So he's like, let me just rain, you know, rain you in a little bit, you know? And so that's a good Newmark there, impression. That, that's, say you, again? You, 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 that was a good Newmark impression. You sort of captured his essence there. Hey, because he says it to me all the time. You know, T, <laughs> could you erase that middle part of your verse? 
and put something else there. <laughs> producer, a producer. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He comes through everything. But you know yeah. what? We 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 always get that uh that that great quality, that great bounce. And our in our second album, oh man, the trademark record with um, Austin uh, Austin Antoine. Oh shit, right there. Yeah. Yeah, I had to I had to represent Austin Antoine. You know what I mean? Uh, it's it's so fire. Uh, it, man, every if you if <laughs> you gotta go get it, man. You really gotta yeah. go get it. The energy is there. The synergy that you know that we had making it. It was it was it's the bond. That's super dope. I think I saw you guys perform at like the delicious. Did you do one of like the delicious yeah. um, like uh, yeah. street like uh, down here in L.A.? Yeah, it was. Yeah, like, yeah we uh, did. That was party. so cool. Yeah, party. yeah. It's what's crazy is that that block party that we did. My dad uh, came to see me that day, yeah. and he was he. Um, they went to the they went to the wrong block party, but then they <laughs> uh, my aunt brought him over to the right block party. And um, they just caught me getting off the stage. And then I, uh, I talked to my dad. And I was like, man, dad. I was like, I'm so happy that you came uh, to see me. Because he never, he never ever seen any of my shows or nothing. But that was the last time I saw my dad. You know what I mean? Oh, you know, wow. That show, you know. So me and my sister, we was like, man, we were so happy that he came, you know. But, uh, yeah, that was that show. So that's, that show means a whole lot to me. Wow, that's crazy. For a lot of reasons, you know? Yeah, yeah, totally. Okay, we're going to move on to the final question in our first round. Uh, this saxophone player from James Brown's band featured on three songs from De La Soul's Balloon Mind State, including a solo performance on the song I Be Blowing. Was it Maceo Parker, Fred Wesley, Kenny G, or Sonny Rollins? <laughs> I'm not going to say Kenny G. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, we was a fan of Kenny G back in the day. Me, me and my homeboy Kai. Who wasn't? <laughs> Who among us wasn't? A fan I think of it was. Kenny um, yeah, I mean, Kenny G had his thing. It's, it's like you know, you need your, uh, you need some bubbles with that. But I'm gonna <laughs> go with, I'm gonna go with Maceo Parker. He's going Maceo. Let's see if he's right, folks. I am Maceo. I be blowing the soul out of Maceo life. Parker is correct. You know, we were talking about De La earlier, and yeah. obviously, you know the. For for all of the, you know, the, the far side starting out is it sounded like such an East Coast group in many ways, you know, because of the production. There's been a lot. I'm not here to educate anybody on this. You guys know that, like, there was a certain sound that you guys were cultivating that wasn't necessarily being done on the West. But, like, truth be told, the first album, Bizarre Ride, starts and it's like a live band playing. So you guys always were, were incorporating, like, live instruments. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, man. JMD, uh, drummer, man, yeah, he held it down with us, you know, when we were doing our skits, you know, for uh, Jigaboo Time and all that. Uh, th those were just long. Th we had freestyle sessions that were long as hell. I mean, wow. that's just how we created, you know, that's how we created our work. You know, we would get in and we would jam and then we would just take, you know, take the good parts and make songs out of them. You know what I'm saying? But yep, yeah, that's 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 exactly what we did. You know what I mean? Uh, we tried to do. I remember years ago we tried to do a show with a live band, and it kind of didn't work out for us then, um, for for a lot of reasons, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, the way that the hip hop sound was, we couldn't really use a live band to make hip hop the boom bap. You know what I mean? Because it just sound thinner. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So you needed the SB12. You needed the the MPC to to get that dirt and that grit and, you know, really dig in with it. You know, LAJ, J Swift, you know, we was very particular. We were all very particular about the sound. So, and I think that, I think that happened to the Roots too, because their first album was all live. And then, you know, they started kind of, they did a turn to make it different for that boom bap. And man, they've been killing it ever since. You know what I mean? Yeah, totally. and, and and I like that. I don't. I love the Roots' first album. Anyways, I love everything the Roots do. Same. Shout out to Black Thought, man. You Shout so out consistent, Black brother. Black Thought is finally getting his flowers. It seems you know, like for, right? for being a guy who was who was always kind of uh, rated as underrated. He's now dude. you know like he's really getting his praise and it's just due. Dude, um, he's hands down like just that dude. Yeah, and you guys featured Black Thought somewhat early for him too on the Plain Rap album as well. Yeah, I think he, I, I remember he did some verse, it was like, I scoop 
scuba dive underneath the streets or something like that. And I was like, <laughs> yep, that's Black Thumb. Yeah. <laughs> let, him, let him go off. Um, so, hell okay, yeah. Talking, yeah, hell yeah. So we're talking about De La here. And so uh, just as a little interstitial question, I have to ask, you know, for you, what is your favorite De La album? Like, what would you say is your personal favorite? They, they have so many great ones, but what is yeah. the one that holds a special place to you? What's really special is Three Feet High and Rising. I got to say that. Uh, and, and man, they, I, I love a lot of, I love all of their records, but Three Feet High and Rising was definitely, there were so many inside jokes that you didn't get until like later on in your life. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Or yeah. if you were hanging out with them and then you're like, oh, so that's what that shit meant. That's what that joke was. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's just, they were just amazing. Like, I like how they were like, uh, even like the De La Soul is dead. I, I love that record. Yeah, that, that, that might people, be my favorite. That, that's man, my favorite. That, here's a, here's a, here's a like quick story. And sure. I, I don't mean to take up a lot of time. But no. the girl I was dating years ago, her brother had gotten uh, the De La Soul is dead uh, cassette. And, you know, he was listening to it. And he's like, oh, man, I hate this shit. Right. And he took it to the he took it to the curb. And he stomped the shit out of it, right? And I was like, what the fuck? And I was like, because I haven't heard it yet. So <laughs> I picked it up from the curb. I, he pulled all the shit out. Oh, wow. I, fucking took, I took a pen. <laughs> and I taped the shit up and I took a pen and I rewinded it all the back and I put it in the tape player and I listened to it and I was like, I love this shit. What the <laughs> fuck was wrong with him? You know what I mean? Because that's when hip hop was like that was hip hop. You know what I'm saying? You got you, you. A lot of people went through a lot for hip hop back in the day. You know what I mean? Yeah. But you know, people. It's 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 good for people to be honest about how they feel about something too. You know what I mean? And and that was a a, a good record that I, I I enjoyed as well, especially after he fucked it up like that. I was like, no, nah, I'm about work. to listen. You, you put that. You got put it to work. Into rebuilding it. Yeah, yeah, I got it to work. You know what I mean? Like, Man. got it to work, listened to it, and I loved it. But Three Feet High and Rising was by far, you know, that 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 was a pivotal point in hip hop, and I loved it. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm seeing some love. Nikki Jean in the chat says that she loves Stakes is High. That's another great one, too. Stakes I mean, is yeah. High. Oh, my yeah. God. I can't fault anybody. If you say the first, like, four or five albums is your favorite, I'm not... There are certain people that, like, you know, when people say who their favorite is, like their favorite record, it might, like, get your antenna up and you're like, how could you say it? But with De La, first yeah. five, four or five records, like, I'm not mad at any of it. You know, like, yeah, it's, man. they're all classics. They're, yeah, they're, man. An enduring <sighs> group, for sure. Um, all right, we're going to move on to our second round. The second round is called Picasso Baby. So in this round, I'm going to show you a small piece of an album cover. And you have to tell me what the album is by the little piece of the album that you uh, see. Shout out to DJ Mark Love in the chat. Mark Love. Mark Love, Steps. what up, what up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so here Shout we go. Shout out to First, uh, Le Maestro Minds, too. My homie oh, sure. from, uh, from London, the UK. I think he's in uh, Berlin now. But shout out to you, youngster. I see you. We're international, baby. You know what it is. All right, here we go. <laughs> We're going to move on to the first question in this round. You need to tell me what album this is. Is it Red Man? There is a dark side is it second to none self-titled album freestyle fellowship to whom it may concern or is it queen latifah all hail the queen let's go with uh freestyle fellowship he's going he feels casual about it and he's saying freestyle fellowship and he is correct that is the fellowship Ooh, right baby bam uh how, big how, do, how do i know that how tell me Probably hanging out with Mark Love. <laughs> <laughs> Full circle. You see how it works. Yeah, there. he came just did. in time. <laughs> um, what was it? Uh, you know, being a, a group that was sort of emerging around the same time as them. How up were? How up on each other were you guys? Uh, like Far Side and Fellowship at that time. Oh man, we was like family, straight up. Like uh, uh, Peace was always with us at at. Um, SCU where we first started, you know what I mean? And um, Jay Swift and, and Fat Lip was always going down to, um, oh my goodness. Good Life? Uh, yeah, The Good Life. Yeah. All the time, you know what I mean? And so we were like family, man. I remember like Peace showing me how to write my lyrics in my, in my lyric book to make it easier for me to flow it. Cause I used to write in these big ass paragraphs and shit. And, uh, mm -hmm. and Peace was like, you should just do it as the flow goes. And it was just going like that. And I've been doing it ever since. And it made sense for me. You know what I mean? 
Yeah. And um, just a lot of things, man. Just like, sh you know, sharpening your mental tools with these guys. These cats was top notch. You know what I mean? Like when you heard Freestyle Fellowship doing their thing, it was real. And they were just coming off the they were just coming off the dome. Micah Nine, you know, all of them. Uh, AC alone, I love yeah. AC. I love them all, man. Yeah. How I, I can't even I, they, I can't even put them individually. I love them all, man. They've always been there. They're family. You know what I'm saying? Totally legends for sure. All right, I gotta move on them every time. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, every chance that's... I get, because they were like you know like spearheaders in the West Coast. You know, and, it was and, it was Freestyle Fellowship and it was Far Side. We, I mean, there's more. There's so many more people that I'm, of course. That I'm mentioning now, but um, that made up West Coast hip hop going in. And then there was, you know, like uh, Souls of Mischief up north too. Is just like our, it's like a, <laughs> our like we're family, like cousins. Absolutely, yeah. And you it's I mean? like, you know, I think on a broader level, a lot like the history books might show more like, okay, the West Coast was was Dre and the West Coast was, you know, and, and that's not taking away anything from the sounds that like, you know, obviously the most commercially successful, like an album like The Chronic, like, you know, change, change like the sound of hip hop, but there are so many people. And when I think about Freestyle Fellowship, it's like everybody who is a practitioner and really has studied it is so quick to say they, they were so influential and, and so important. Oh yeah. You know? That's why I think it's important that we continue to talk about them, you know, and, and yeah, keep man. the conversation. Yeah, um, man. I'm trying to think of, um, so there was a time where it was like, you know, Freestyle Fellowship and then, um, oh my goodness, I'm, I can't think of their name. Uh, this is hurting my feelings right now. Oh no, it's okay. I, I'd say we could edit it out. No, 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 the song, be with me, the, the song 13. Song 13. I know my hip hop heads out there know. Oh, oh feral, feral Monch. So there oh, was a time where, you know, you heard Feral Munch and you heard, you know, Freestyle Fellowship and stuff like that. And I was like, man, they're all like, like, com you know, they're compatible. Yeah. You know, like it was just, it was a beautiful thing to see, to see like the level that they were at. They were up there like Feral Munch was, man. Thir the song 13 was hip hop's top shit at one time. Yeah, you know what I mean? When people shit, heard yeah. it, it was like, God damn. Or, you know, when you heard, um, uh, there's organized confusion. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, Mark Love. DJ Same Mark thing. Love in the place. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's <laughs> what's up. You know, it's, we've come such a long way hip hop wise, man. And just like, it's like kind of like connecting Voltron. Yeah. And they were, and they slid in that, and they slid in that area with, with like Feral Monch and shit, as far as like Voltron was concerned. You know what I mean? Like yeah. when you putting hip hop together and shit like that, it was, it was, it was dope, man. Totally. All right, we're going to move on to the next question. Uh, this is another album cover. What album is this? Is it too short? What's my favorite word? Is it Jay Dilla? Welcome to Detroit. Eight Ball and MJG coming out hard or Master P Ice Cream Man. We've got some sort of smoke happening here. Uh -huh. yeah, I'm yeah. going to say, uh, I'm gonna say Jay, Jay Dilla, welcome to Detroit. He says, Jay Dilla, welcome to Detroit. <laughs> Absolutely correct. That is Jay Dillon, Blow <laughs> Smoke in the strip club. Yeah. Um, oh, is that a strip club? Oh, there's definitely a, a woman in the back. I don't know. I didn't notice the strip club because all the smoke. Yeah, exactly. You, you, couldn't be, you couldn't be faulted for that. Uh, you, I mean, you're in a unique position that, like, you worked with somebody who, you know, even at the time, he was killing it when he was greatest. You know, like, people have tattoos Crazy. of him on their body and shirts that he changed their life. You know, yeah. what, what What was, I know I know the Lab Cabin experience, from what I've read and researched, was a lot of interesting things happening at once, uh, you know, um, within the group internally. But what's yeah. your favorite memory of uh, working with JD in that time? Okay. My favorite, absolute favorite memory was JD coming up to me and say, he's like, yo, man, I got a group too. And I was like, you got a group? I was like, what's up? He's like, yeah, I got this dat. He had this dat tape, right? And he's like, yeah, it's my group, uh, Slum Village. And I was like, oh shit, all right, cool, man. I'm gonna take it home tonight, and I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna take a listen to it. Man, I took that shit home. My head was blown, bl blown back. Yeah, I was like, what the fuck? And the cadence, just like how they dropped, like everything. They was just man, they was their own thing, and it was just it was just crazy. It was crazy to see that, cause that, cause all right. So look, 
uh, when I said pivotal points with, with um, De La Soul, that was a pivotal point in hip hop and hip hop changed. Just like um, the Beastie Boys was a pivotal point in hip hop and hip hop changed. You know, I mean, it's out of order. So I'll go Beastie Boys first, then De La, and then, you know, like uh, Tribe Called Quest, Far Side, all pivotal points in hip hop. And then you get to Slum Fucking Village, who just shakes the, the, the concrete, just blows that shit open as a pivotal yep. point in hip hop and where the grooves go and where the snare falls back. Like, dude, they was just on some other shit. Yeah. And, and you then, got a slice of that for, for yeah. you guys. Yeah. So then to hear, like, to sit on the bus with uh, T3 and, and, and uh, Bob Frank and everybody, and they talking about the story of where the beats came from for running and the sacrifice that they took. Right. With we the had, beats that were going to be for them. We had Frank Nitt on the show. Yo, and, and, and Frank Nitt tells us that basically every amazing, you know, Dilla beat that Tribe got or that you guys got, where it was at one point, it was a Slum Village yeah. song or it was a Frank and Dink song. And then JD would be like, ah, I got to take this one away. You, you got to make that move. And, yep. and you know what? And, to, and, and right now, to this day, and, and even I, I said it to them, I was like, man, thank you guys for right, making sure. that sacrifice to give to give that to us man that's big yeah you know what i mean like as a as a team as a unit like first it, it, there's a there's probably a place in, in life where you don't know where you're gonna be like in when in hip-hop or in music at all like are we even gonna get in is there a, is there like a little sliver that we can sl we're gonna fucking slide into and they're dope as fuck right yeah. You know it's, what I mean? Like, who, you could be dope as super fuck and still not be <laughs> in the game. Right. So it's, you know just what a, mean? It's, it's an alchemy of so many things that happen. Hey, that the stars aligned. The stars aligned, exactly. The stars aligned. And when, and, and when they told me that story, dude, I was just like, yo, thank you guys for this. You know what I mean? Thank you for blessing us with, with all the songs that, you know, that you guys sacrificed. You know, oh, and then but, and we we did a good job with that shit though. We <laughs> we put some we we put some we put some D's on that motherfucker, right? <laughs> and, and and next thing you know, you know, timeless, timeless, timeless. songs, timeless songs, In incredible. But the, right. the, cra the, the crazy shit is they still had an arsenal of dope ass shit. Right, it's not like you took the Billings. only good. You didn't take <laughs> the only good Dilla beats. Like, yeah. like it's like oh yeah, like Far Side got all the heat. I mean, nah. It's like he had plenty. He was serving everybody, including had his own. plenty, was making plenty more. This dude was making, okay, so I, I, I produced She Said, right? Yeah. And I was like, yo, Dilla, well, JD at the time. I was like, yeah. yo, JD, check it out, man. We need a remix for for, uh, for She Said. It was like, all right, cool. So he went and made like five of them motherfuckers. Yeah. And then I picked the one that you hear, the, 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 uh, I picked that one. I said, that's going to be that one for it. Vibes. Vibes. In the fucking pocket. And then we put the fresh video on it, too, from Amsterdam. Baby. Yeah, the black and white <laughs> artistic. You guys were, like, like just yeah. floating on the, on the water. Yeah. it's. It, I mean, there's not enough great things I can say about it. But, I mean, what a contribution. And, and you know, salute to you. And, and yeah, man. Yeah, there. man. Yo, thanks for the happy birthday thing. That's what's What's up? Peace, peace. Happy belated <laughs> 50. Yeah, man. We're, Fucking we're, we're 50. Yeah, wow. man. 50 is a great age, man. You give less of a shit <laughs> about everything. I, I can't <laughs> wait. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, um, man. <laughs> final question in this round. What album is this? Is it The Roots, Illadelf Half-Life, Souls of Mischief, No Man's Land, Boogie Down Productions, Criminal Minded, or is it Black Moon, Enter the Stage? It's The Roots. He says The Roots. <laughs> That is correct. We, now, all right, I, I should have known yeah. you were going to get that right because you already said you love all things Roots, which is uh, just confirmed. I, do. Uh, I, I knew I knew that I loved you for a reason, and now I, <laughs> I have another reason to. Um, you know, they kind of interpolated a far side, uh, like B side on this album. They took the Emerald Butterfly yeah. and turned it into the, the Nautic, which is what they yeah. called it. Um, and that was uh, cool. Yeah, I was, was happy about cool. that. I was happy. Yeah. happy. I was super happy about that. You know? I mean, because like, that was kind of rare, too, because a lot of times at that time in hip hop, if uh, groups were sampling, it was often from things that were significantly older. They're taking like records from the 70s. Yeah. You know, like that that Emerald Butterfly is like Lab Cabin era. 
And that's pretty much around the same time that uh, Ill Duff Half Life came out, like within a year or, or so. Of each other. Man, I don't. Shit, it's it's all a blur <laughs> to me, man. <laughs> you're you're fifty. You don't you don't give a shit anyway. I'm like, 50, like, years I, like I don't even remember all them amazing tour buses we had. It's just a blur. <laughs> it's a you blur. Know? It's all a blur, but yeah. yeah shout out, shout out to the roots. Shout out, shout uh, out we had roots. Questlove on our show uh, a few episodes ago. And oh, yeah, nice. Yeah, we we uh, we, they're they're friends of the show. All right, we're gonna I, we gotta I, we're, we have so many great stories that are happening, but I gotta keep it yep. moving. You, yep. you know, Instagram cuts you off at an hour. Yeah, I'm gonna stop so, talking. Go ahead, let's go. No, no, no. <laughs> Listen, I love the talking and I encourage <laughs> the talking, but but you have to accept if I like wave my hand, we got We got to keep it going. All right, cool. All right, we're going to move into our third round, and the third round is called Digging in the Crates. Ah, damn it. This is all about the sample. So I'm going to ask you a question and play you a sample. So we tested your eyes. We tested your general knowledge. Now we're going to test your ears. So here we go. The oh, first shit. question. Let's go. Yeah, all right, here we go. Parliament's Let's Play House is the primary sample in a hit single by this hip-hop group. I will play you the Parliament song in question. <laughs> Is it Naughty by Nature, Digital Underground, Rascals, or KMD? Let's go with Digital Underground. Yes, yeah, the DU, baby. <laughs> you want to talk about the, the, uh, the, you know, the quilt of, of styles and West Coast aesthetics? How could you leave out DU? I mean, that's like, the, you got to include them in, in that whole, you know, like tapestry of individual like creative crazy sounds and aesthetics you know they were definitely a pivotal point in hip-hop too man wow yeah. they were so amazing they were so fun he man and all all the clubs everybody was doing the humpty hump and then all of this stuff man it was just like a fun band everybody wanted digital underground you yeah. know and then tupac came from digital underground god damn exactly i mean it's just there's so <laughs> many different tentacles from 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 right underground that you could like sort of link and that that's you know it's that's what we love about this show and, and about the music that we celebrate here is that there's so much connectivity and there's there's you know it's it's a lineage you know it's it's yeah. really dope yeah um all right we're gonna <laughs> mark love is saying let me stop i, see, I saw it i saw all it. right mark you gotta keep him honest here come on now come on uh, all right we're gonna move on to the second question in this round uh joe henderson sextet's song without a song is the primary sample on a single by this delicious vinyl group. So let me play you the sample and you tell me which of these delicious vinyl groups sampled the song. All right, I'm ready. All right, he's ready. What, what is the answer? The Waskles. This is the Waskles. <laughs> that is correct. Yes. <laughs> Another Mike, shout out to Mike Ross. You better put the Waskles out. Get the Waskles up on, on Spotify and all that shit, man. People need to hear that. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, they need to hear that album. Man, J Swift, man, he did such a great job on that record. Those oh. cats were those cats were like uh our future back then. Right. Absolutely. They were they They lived they were, it. They were bananas. <laughs> they were our little brothers, man. They were right. bananas as fuck. Uh, I we'll, we'll leave it at that. I don't want to implicate anybody. I mean, I feel like the uh, the statute of limitations has passed. I Maybe mean, we did some crazy shit, but you know. No, no, uh, no. I'm just like, just you know, like just how they are. You know, what I mean, like right. they were, <laughs> like if if I had some wild thoughts, they would act them out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> they you you're able to live vicariously about your thoughts through them. Man, they were our little brothers for sure. One hundred. Yeah, check out the Waskles, Quinn. Tribe Called Quinn uh, says you got to check it out. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Don't, don't sleep. Somebody in the chat said that they're on iTunes, so I think that they might be out there. You know, oh, it's good. All on YouTube. I'm, I'm, yeah, man. That's what's up, Dan. Please, go buy this shit. Yeah, absolutely. Now, uh, you guys, you know, Delicious Vinyl was uh, obviously such a pivotal part in the Far Side's uh, development. And I, I heard you on yeah. a recent podcast where you sort of uh, were talking about that at the time, the Far Side was getting wined and dined a lot. There were there might have been better deals that you could have taken financially, but what you liked about Delicious was that they pretty much were hands off creatively. They were like, whatever you guys do. Yeah, you know, and that was the do. most that was the most important thing for us because we're 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 there to make records. We weren't there to you know 
I don't know. We probably would have got lost uh, mentally if we got like some big monetary deal and shit. You know, like, there's no time to be statistical and cocky, man. It was like time to dig into that record and start like kind of. Yeah, it, we went through so much. We went. It went through so bizarre ride. That's why we called it a bizarre ride because you know we went through so much to to have our freedom as well as you know getting the right shit out there to the folks. You know. Totally, totally. Um, yeah, no, I mean, and, and it's really cool too. I mean, obviously you guys, we were just talking about earlier, you did the uh, block party for Delicious. Delicious is still like, you know, an entity in the space. Yeah. And it's like, it's a restaurant and like, you know, they're- Pizza, they do a yeah, lot the of pizza things. spot, yeah. The pizza spot, you know, the annual block party. I missed that this year, you know, that, that's like an annual uh, I know. thing for me. Right? I know, you know well, right? it, it'll be I back. will be it'll back be, there. Yeah, it'll be back when shit turns back on. When they turn the lights on, in this place. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, <Ooh. man. laughs> All right. Hey. We're going to move on to, and we're, we're fans. We're fans. Uh, we've actually, we've done live events. When we were doing live events, we did a bunch uh, with Delicious. We did them at the, the you know, the, their stores and at the record store. We did like a JBL okay, yeah. art thing. So shout out, shout out to Rick Ross and Mike Ross. And, yep. And shout out to Rick guys. and Mike. Shout out to Leslie and everybody, the whole crew, man. So many to name. DV, thank you. Love them. Love them. DV. All right. Third and final question in this round. Trey. So we're talking about the drums on Al Green's I'm Glad You're Mine. Who were they first sampled by? Everybody listed here has sampled them, but who did it first? I will play you and the audience the drums in question. We've all heard them. Okay. So who sampled them first? Was it Special Ed, Eric B and Rakim, MC Light or Massive Attack? I'm gonna go with MC Light. All right, we're gonna do a little reveal. We're gonna we're gonna hop in the time machine. We're going back to the early '90s, and we're gonna do a reveal here, and we're gonna go in order from recent to last. So, of the people listed here, I believe it was 1992. It was sampled by Massive Attack. So they did it most recently. So you're in the clear so far. Okay. Okay. Then uh, we had a year, no, this was in 1990, or yeah, I believe 1990 or 91, we had. She said she want my kids and help me make my next G. Tell me Eric B. and Rakim. Okay. Mahogany. Still in the clear. All right. Still in the clear. This is the moment of truth, Trey. Right before that, it was sampled by. Brooklyn, New York, flat boys to the specific is the topic of the topic. Special Ed, which means that the first person of these to use it was MC. It doesn't matter, it goes into my head. MC Light. Tape it big. You said that MC Light was such a big influence, and you had her on uh, on your album as well. Yeah. Um, what was that experience like working with her? I mean, you know what? She had did it at a different studio than me. Um, okay. She MC, MC Light was friends with uh, my manager at the time, Tatiana uh, Litvin, and uh, man, man, Tatiana was just super hard worker, go get her, man. You know, she, she connected the dots and everything, and and the rest was history for that. And then later down the later down in the world, like MC Light uh, linked up with me out here in Portland because uh, she was DJing, and then I, you know, that's when I started getting my getting my DJ uh, feet wet. You know what I mean? So. She's the one to put me up on. Uh, she put she played me Drake's song, the very first song, uh, "Baby, You're My Everything." You're all I ever wanted. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And when we heard that, I was like, "Yo, that shit is fire!" I think we were at like a, a Michael Jordan party or something like that. She was DJing at. She's like, "Yo, Trey, come with me to this yeah. thing." I'm like, "Oh hell yeah!" So you know, just sitting <laughs> watching her DJ. You know, you know DJ shit, man. So that's the homie, man. That just gave me a thought. You very much were a proponent of being like a rapper who sang melodically. And now we have that as being like the style that Drake and that, you know, so many people have. Yeah. Like, do you sort of see that you're, do you think, like, do you feel connected to that at all? Like, because you were, obviously we look back at like the early MCs, like there was a lot of melodic mm -hmm. stuff going on in like New York and early on, but like, you were you you had a song on a on a rap album where you just sang the whole damn thing, and you've always been as much of a singer as a rapper. Yeah, I I, I figured I, to you know back then I was just like the singer in the shower. Now I'm just like the uh, 
the uh, the the singer full of tequila. <laughs> I never considered myself <laughs> like a a super technical singer. So like if you hear me singing, I'm probably drinking uh, tequila of some sort and just emoting. <laughs> yes, it's getting the emotions hey. out. Anyway, yeah, I was just getting, yes. yo. Basically, I, I wasn't singing. I was just crying because I was hurt and shit. That's what other fish was. I was hurt. I got kicked in the dirt. They kicked right. my dick in the dirt. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen. If you're feeling still sad about it, I have a piece of advice for you. There's other fish in the sea, my friend. You know, there's, there's other fish, so just just take oh, take man. take the advice. Uh, yes. All right, we're moving on. I'll, I'll, I'll write that down. <laughs> yeah, write, write that down. Write that down. You can use that. I'll, I'll let you use that. Uh, yes, yes. All right, we're here at our final round, and the final round is called Time's Up. So this is our speed round. So this is how this is going to go. Okay. We'll have 90 seconds to Got answer it. five questions in the category of your choosing. These are your – and these are not multiple choice, by the way. Okay. So here are the rounds tonight. Round A is they don't dance no more. This is all questions about dancing. And like songs about dancing. Okay. Category B is when actors try rapping. We we all know <laughs> that some of those actors try to okay. put their you yeah. know put their, uh -huh. their hat into the ring. And then the third is say word. These are all songs or questions about the word word. So you get to pick your category, Trey. All right, let's go. We, we, but which category? You get to pick which one we, we're doing. How about uh, they don't dance no more? Okay, he's doing they don't dance no more. So let me go over these rules. Oh, You're going to have 90 seconds. If you don't know the answer, you can say pass and we can come back to it. But if you answer incorrectly, the question is dead. So, you know, think about it, but don't take too long. I'll nudge you along if we're running out Let's of time. Let's go. Let's do it. Let's do it. Um, yeah. I got 90, that's why I got a few seconds to do it. Okay. Exactly. Let's go. Exactly. There's, there's a little bit of a delay, but, you know, it's all good. Um, I have OC's time's up here, and it is time for 90 shit. seconds. So when we stop hearing OC uh your time's up so trey are you ready to do this <laughs> yes let's go let's do it as ready as you're gonna be all right here we go <laughs> tupac worked as a backup dancer for this group early in his career oh you need to, uh uh we just talked digital underground digital underground is correct okay in 2014 this rapper debuted his viral song shmoney dance fuck i forgot his name all right we'll we'll, we'll get back to it uh, Trouble T. Roy, who was eulogized in the song Troy, was a dancer for this group. Heavy D and the Boys. That is correct. All right. Uh, Suge Knight publicly took shots at Puff Daddy for dancing in artist videos at this event in 1995. The Source Convention. Yes, the Source, Source, Source Awards. Awards. Yeah, we'll take that. We'll take that. In 2010, this group asked the world to teach them how to Dougie. I forgot their name. All right, okay, <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll go back to it. We'll go back to the other one. Who was but I the know rapper? on that one, I just like the first verse. Okay, keep going. <laughs> Who did Schmoney Dance? We're going back to the Schmoney Dance Award. Uh, or, uh, uh, Bobby Schmurder. Bobby Schmurder is correct. Okay, last question. We're going back to it. 2010, the group who, who had to teach me how to duggy. <laughs> who wants I, to be taught how to duggy? Uh, I still don't know. <laughs> Chat, help them out. Chat, can you help they, them out? Hey, they help me with the last one, too. I, I got to be honest about that. I looked at the we chat. We appreciate your honesty, but right now we're about points, Trey. We're about points. Guys, who, who was oh, it? Oh, Cali Swag District. Cali Swag District is correct. Trey Hardson. I'm going to total up your score, but no matter what, I want you to know that you are a champion in our eyes. Thank you. Oh, everybody. Everybody, put your hands up. <laughs> Everybody at home, but but not uh, you're holding your uh, phone because then you'll, uh, you'll drop your what phone. What a hard set. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so before I'm gonna I'm gonna total your scores and guys, uh, we have like ten minutes left. So if you have questions for Trey, drop them in the question box. We'll get into it. But Trey, my yo, what a hard set you though. Throw them hearts score. out. <laughs> <laughs> Throw the hearts. You know we're collecting hearts, hearts. capturing your hearts. Uh, <laughs> Trey, who is somebody now that you've done this game? Who would you nominate for us to have on the questions? Who Who is somebody that you think would be a, a good contestant on this show now that you've done it? Uh, T3. I would say T3, T3 from, from Slum, Slum, Village. From Slum Village. Yes. Hell yeah. All right. Uh, we, we should reach out to him. We, I think we could get him. We have Frank Nitt on. We've had some other people. You know, it's... Yep, you can get so, T3. Trey. You can get Guilty Simpson. 
Ooh. Oh, so you're going to the Detroit connection here. You got, you're, I love you're going the, to Hey, man, I went, on, I went on the road with those guys, man. But look, T3, put T3 on. Because he, yo, he's okay. one of them. He, he's, he's knowledgeable, you know? So, he's pretty so thorough Trey, about total, this, too. Yeah, totally. I've totaled up your score. You got 14 out of 15 right, which is a pretty damn good uh, score. Let me tell you who you're in the club with. Th these are other people, past guests, who have gotten 14. You're in the club with Fonte from Little Brother, another rapper oh, singer. I love that. Another yeah. singer. Uh, DJ Babu from uh, Dilated People. Okay, what up, Babu? Uh, Merce, shout out to Merce. Shout out uh, to Merce. Uh, DJ Trackstar from Run the Jewels. So you're, All right. you're, sitting, you're, you're in good company here. All this right. is a good place for you to be. Uh, do you have, is it okay if we take some questions from the crowd? We have like five minutes left. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Uh, All right. Sure, I'll let you read them off and then I'll yeah. go. I've got some here. Um, all right, and Tribe Called Quentin asks, this is about a story you told earlier, do you remember what Slum Village tracks Dilla had put on that DAT tape that you listened to? Uh, oh, sh yeah. Um, the, I don't know. That, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I don't know why, why the fuck I'm fucking with you. With you, I don't know. That shit was just, oh my God. That one really blew my head off. It was, I, it was, a, it was a bunch of them, I, I can't, oh man. I still have that dad tape too, I believe. Wow. Is that in the garage as well? It's in it's it's in it's it's within the far side, the hands of the side. I know that for sure. Some one of us have it. All right, you know? all right. Let's let's see what else we got here. Um all right, uh this is a question uh from uh Steve Wonder and he asks, uh, was running or drop a mutual agreement or did one person fight for those beats? Uh <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. What, 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 what's the story on those? Um, no, it was, it was, you know, all the things that we picked when we, you know, we were at Q-Tip's house and we were just going through, the, going through the mix, the snippets and stuff like that. And we just said what we wanted to do. You know, we were out in New York for like about six months recording. So mm. it was just like, you know, we went through so many beats with so many people, but these ones really stood out, so that's why they're there. You know what I mean? Totally. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so it wasn't right, really we have a struggle for it. It was just this is what we needed. Yeah, uh, uh, we have a question. How difficult was filming the drop video? Now there is an excellent documentary that I recommend everybody check out. It's probably on YouTube that Spike Jones did. That kind of uh, you know shows the process. But you guys were you had to learn how to rap backwards, right? Yep. 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 <clears throat> now. Right. Um, learning we had a linguist come in and teach us uh it, you know he broke down everything um first of all the the tape that we were learning from was in reverse so the linguist wrote everything that he heard on the reverse tape he wrote it out from there we studied that reverse language every day on planes on trains just everywhere and then we practiced it Right. Also, they had it at double time speed, too, just in case you have to do slow motion shit, too. So we're, like, learning all this. All of that shit. Wow. It, was, it was just crazy. So that was, um, it was hard, but it was fun. I mean, that's the type of band we were, though. We were into, you know, kind of doing shit like that challenging uh i mean it's one of the i think it's one of the best music videos uh ever i mean it, it's thank you. such a yeah it, it's a, a cra crazy crazy um thank, thank all right uh we have a question how do you feel about other artists replaying far side beats i like for instance when joe uh used uh stutter you know like he, he did stutter um what, what what are your thoughts on that um my thoughts are so i i'm i'm in a headspace of I like when things continue to create itself into other things. Like, I, you know, Stutter was was dope. I remember being on the uh, on the slopes, um, just going up. What do you call it? Uh, whatever those things that take you on the, the lift, snowboarding. The lift. Yeah, 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 yeah we're yeah. up on the lift, and then I heard like Stutter just at like a you know a ski resort. And interpretations of of a song or or paying homage and all of that stuff, and I and I welcome it. You know, I wonder how, uh, you know, George Clinton feels, you know what I'm saying? I mean, George Clinton leaned into it super heavy because he was he was asking people to sample him and it's, flip him. And, yeah. 
it's good to let it be. It's good to let it happen. You know what I mean? Like, let the colors be the colors, man. Let them keep on because it helps you publishing wise for one sense. In the other sense, I just like to see uh, other creative spins on some one thing. It's kind of like, remember, like the dance hall days. They would have so many different, you know, MCs on this one beat. On the you same know? rhythm, yeah, yeah. And But exactly. whoever put the fire on it, they put the fire on it. So it's hard. If you put fire on something, it's really hard to, like, have another group try to do it because you hear the difference. You know, I'm just confident about what we do over the beat. The beats call for you. You don't call for the beat. Like, I try to stay the fuck off of beats that don't call for me, to be honest. You know what I'm saying? That's just right. out of respect for music, you know? But they called for us, and we just laid into it as it was supposed to be. So I'm, I love watching. Man, that's a different, that's a different twist. That's a, yeah. that's a dope twist. I was about to uh, play it. Uh, la I either played it last night when I was DJing uh, on this live stream, or I was going to oh, yeah. play it. Yeah. <laughs> that's incredible. That's great. Okay, we have time for a couple more. Uh, Raise okay. It Up asks... What's been one of your favorite moments touring? You guys toured so heavily and you've toured, you know, in, in many different incarnations, but what, you know, what's one of a uh, memory that stands out to you? My favorite moment are tours that I don't remember. <laughs> 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 no, man, I had so many. I don't know. Uh, I toured with Oza Motley as well. And those were good times too. You know, uh, I've toured with uh, my boy, Venus Brown, I've done, it's, it was cool, like, because when we were touring, we had, like, uh, you know, we were in a tour bus and stuff like that. That's my favorite. I, I'm going to just be honest. Having a tour bus, <laughs> somebody else doing the driving and shit, that's just the way it's, it Who's should be. Who's going to be mad at you for that? In a perfect world. For yeah. so many reasons, you know what I mean? Um, which, we did a tour with Ice Cube. Oof. Oh, man. Wow. Just, there was so much there were so many tours man i don't even remember okay, Corn, we were on tour with corn that's right okay we have uh, we'll do one more question this is a question i'm sure you get asked a lot will we ever have another far side album what's go i mean we literally have two minutes here and this is okay. a complicated answer i bet but what's what's up with the far side are, are we going to see you know a, a reunion at some point i would love i would love that to happen, happen. I will. Yeah. I'm open. I'm gonna say I'm, for, on my end. I'm open to record and, and put out new music and tour again. All of that. I'm saying I'm ready. I'm open, willing to to let let it happen for for us, for the fans, for our kids, for our legacy. That's what's up. Okay, that's. So I, I'm a green light. I'm a green light. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, Trey. I want to thank you so much again for coming on the show. We had a great time. Uh, it's so great to hear your stories. Thank and, you. And uh, we, we, we'll have you back sometime. We'd love to, you know, work more with you. And once, you know, we'll get up to we'll get up to Oregon once we are able to travel. We're just <laughs> on the road, bro. Yeah, man. Well, make sure it's Portland because Oregon is just a lot of different places. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, we'll, I, I didn't remember if you said Portland or, or just Oregon in general, but yeah, we're gonna go to Portland. Don't worry. <laughs> go to Portland. <laughs> um, if we'd gone elsewhere, I would have been. I would have hit you up like, "Hey, oh, Trey, we're like forty-five minutes outside of Portland. You want to come?" <laughs> you know. Like, <laughs> I, um, I, but I, we appreciate yeah. you so much. Thank you for all your contributions to the genre, yes. all the songs, the music, and be safe. And uh, thank you. Again. Thank you. All, all right. right. Peace. Thank you for having me, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Slim Kid Trey. Yes.